Melvin Tong is a doer. He doesn't let anything stop him from doing what he wants. I, I guess when we want to do something, we should just do it. Don't let any reasons whatsoever be, be an excuse not to do it. Not even when he found out that he had cancer at the tender age of 17. Melvin took no time to make his life-changing decision, amputating his leg. There was a, a, a swelling behind my right knee. So, so once we done the biopsy, we found out that it's a, it's a type of a, a cancer known as a fibrosarcoma. So in less than a month, I actually had my amputation done in a university hospital. His sister Joanne says her brother showed great courage with his decision. He is a twin. He has a twin brother, which is physically healthy. And you know, the thought is why Mother Nature, God, have to put it into such a situation that he has to lose a leg and life has just begun for him. He's just 17, haven't even finished his you know, SPM. There's so much things to do. There's so much activities that you actually need both legs. Joanne has been with her younger brother every step of the way throughout his life. Most of the time when he actually asks, uh, it will be more of a supportive role, emotionally, you know, just in case. And my parents actually gave me this big job to do, to make sure that he's safe. So, I'm there for him. All right, done. <laughs> Deep breath. Deep breath. Hey! Deep breath, deep breath, deep breath. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Oh, dude. <laughs> yeah, I'm doing fine. Learning to live with only one leg wasn't easy for Melvin in the beginning. He says the lack of facilities for people with disabilities in Malaysia didn't help either. After my amputation, I actually was on a wheelchair for a few months and I can totally understand why wheelchair-bound disabled people you don't see so many of them on the road because the, the, the facilities are just so poor in Malaysia. Like other amputees, Melvin has to come to terms with the phenomenon called phantom pain or phantom limb. This phantom limb means that, you know, after you amputate your leg, you will still feel that it is there, but it's not. You know, you see, you, you can still feel pain, itch, you know, and when in the middle of the night, you will actually still think that it's there, but it's not. So it's the way the mind works, and he was also prepared for it, and we were so, we were happy in a way, we were glad when we actually, you know, that he actually, you know, let us all know about this situation. The, the Phantom, Phantom League has, has been there and is always there for me. So even like right now, I can still feel my right leg with me. So it's something that I am comfortable uh, with already. I mean, I am, I am accustomed to it. So it's something that I have accepted. The only problem, I guess, is the phantom pain which might come once in a blue moon where you might feel a little, some, some, some pain that you can do nothing about it. So usually how do you deal with uh, it? I, I try to do some exercise, massage myself, <laughs> do some something active to, to avoid them. my yeah, to distract myself from, from the pain. Despite his condition, Melvin tries to lead an active life. Life is normal for me. I mean disability is only when you let it be a disability. So I feel like I'm living a completely normal life and using crutches is, is like part of my life. So I won't feel that you know it is a hassle or difficult and wake up feeling so negative or bad about it, no. In April, he climbed Mount Kinabalu to help raise awareness and funds for the cause against child abuse through Shelter Home. I myself, I personally wanted to, to try different things as well. So, so when Shelter actually organised a climb, I took the first opportunity and just go straight to the office and tell them, hey, I'm here and I want to join. This climb itself, you know, not only just for the children, I think it's a proof for himself and to other people that actually has disability to get out of their comfort zone, you know, do something extraordinary and make life worthwhile. Being the first amputee to climb Mount Kinabalu got Melvin into the Malaysia Book of Records. 
I, I also didn't expect to get this because I always imagine that there are many other amputees who probably went up there before me. So when Malaysia Book of Records actually willing to award me with this certificate, I, I feel very honoured and privileged to receive it. Some of his family members and climbing buddies showed their support for Melvin when he was presented the certificate. The climbing buddies also took the chance to reminisce about their climb. So I think the most challenging part was at night time because when we're leaving at 2 o'clock in the morning, the morning, it's still dark and he's having to climb up this, which is pretty sheer face. Yes. Part of it, you can't even, you've got to hold the rope and one crutch on one rope, so he's like juggling the whole lot together, it's quite amazing. Looking back, I, I guess every, every kilometre is also challenging. But then, but then, if you ask me what is the most challenging part, it's definitely right after we started at Laban Rata. At 2, 2 a.m., as soon as we have to use the ropes, that is where the difficulty started for me. I called him a mountain goat. He's like a mountain goat going up. <laughs> 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 yeah, because practically he's not exactly walking. It's more like hopping. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. yeah, so instead of uh, what, two-legged, four-legged, he's Actually, when you think about it, he got three <laughs> because he got two crutches. <laughs> I think coming down, uh, you, you, I, I, oh, I, I caught you on awesome. video and you were like swinging along uh, when you're coming you? down. Mm. <coughs> you were like just swinging, yeah, you know? That video. And it's uh, quite three. fun, lah. <laughs> yeah. Because uh. he's taking like two, three steps at one shot. Mm. Down. Oh. Swing forward, yeah, yeah, yeah. two steps. Wow. <laughs> right when we actually almost reach the peak, you can hear people cheering. They are so supportive. And you will just bring a tear into your eye if you were there. You know, yeah. and it's like the encouragement that people give you. It will make you push on. I think in life itself, you know, you just need to have supportive people around you and push you on a little bit more, right? Just when you reach the top, that moment is priceless. It has been a good experience. It is my first mountain. As my sister said, the support, the encouragement, it is a very nice thing to know that all these actually exist, they are there. And unless we do it, we, we do not know that everyone around us are there to support us. Since the climb, Melvin has been giving motivational talks to various groups. Inspiring others is something Melvin loves to do. We must dare to dream and, and make our dreams come true. And if you put your heart and soul in doing something you believe in, nothing is impossible. <laughs>